Hey there, welcome to netgamechat.com, a collection of the most advanced networking demos built in Unity. If you're creating a network game or learning how to do that in Unity, you'll find my Discord very helpful. Be sure to join it by clicking the very first link in the description. In this video, we'll take a look at how to install netcode for game objects, set up the network manager, set up a network player, and start the game as a server, client, or host. To get started, you will need a Unity version 2020.3 or later. Once you're ready, begin by heading over to Window and opening the Package Manager. Once Package Manager is open, hit this X and select Add Package from Git URL. Then type com.unity.netcode.gameobjects. I'll leave this text in the description for you to copy. Then hit Add. You can pause the video while you give Unity a moment to install this package. When we're done with installation, it's pretty easy to set up the package manager. Simply right click in the hierarchy and create an empty game object. I'll go ahead and call this network manager. In the network manager, add a new component and search for network manager. You'll see this as a class that comes along with the netcode for game object package. Once you find it, press enter. I will expand the inspector now so we can see the properties of the network manager. The very first thing we want to change about the network manager is this network transport section. The drop down below says select a network transport. Click this and simply select the Unity transport. Once you set this up, you'll see that a new component has been added to the network manager. Next, we want to assign a prefab for the player. If you already have a player controller that you are using for your game, simply drag its prefab into this variable right here and then skip the rest of this section. If you do not have a player prefab and are following along with this tutorial, I have prepared a simple package for you that you can download from the link in the description. Simply download the package and import it into your Unity project. Once imported, you will find a folder in the project called the Simple Character Controller. Open this folder, head over to Characters and then First Person Character and inside Prefabs you will find the FPS Controller. Now select the Network Manager and be sure to assign the FPS Controller to the Player Prefab section. Go ahead and add a new network prefab and also assign the FPS controller here. Now inside the console, you will soon see a warning that says the FPS controller cannot be registered as a network prefab because it does not have a network object component. The network object component is needed for all objects that will be instantiated over the network. To fix this, let's open the FPS controller prefab by double clicking on it from the variable section. Once open, we will need to add the network object component. Simply search for network object from the add component menu. Once you're done with this, you can go ahead and exit from the FPS controller prefab. Now that we are done with that, there's just a few final things we need to set up. Because the network manager uses scene management to load scenes, you will need to add your scene to the build settings. To do this, simply hit file, select build settings and hit add open scenes. You can then close the build settings. All right, now that that's sorted out, the next thing we want to make sure is that player spawning is actually working. All you want to do is make sure that on whatever player controller you're using, in this case, my FPS controller, you need to make sure that the character controller is disabled, your FPS control is actually disabled as well, and if you have any rigid body, it's also disabled. This is because at the moment, we're not managing player spawn positions, and our player will spawn anywhere in the map and want to make sure that when that happens, he doesn't fall through the map. Now, I've cloned my Unity project so that I can have it open in two editors at the same time using Parallel Sync. This is a simple asset that you can grab from the link in the description on their GitHub repo. Once you've got Parallel Sync downloaded, you can find it in this menu up at the top here. Open the Clones Manager and add a new clone. As you can see, I've already done that in my case and I have both editors open. I've also entered play mode in both editors. To start either a host, server or client, you need to open the do not destroy on load level in the hierarchy and then select the network manager. Under the network manager, you'll find these three buttons within the inspector. I'm going to go ahead and start a host. And as you can see, what it has done is it has spawned my FPS controller into the map. At the moment, like I said, he doesn't have any player controls, but you can actually see him spawned. In my second Unity editor, I also select the network manager. And since I already started a host, which is a server and a client, on this particular editor, I'll just select start client. 
again it goes ahead and spawns my player and you can see that in both editors we actually have two players spawned within the hierarchy so those are the two players here and then we've also got two players here and this is a clear sign that our network is actually running and is working all good i'm gonna go ahead and end it here for this tutorial thanks a lot for joining me in the next video, we're going to look at how to set up player controls and set up local player restrictions for each of the connected clients. Be sure to like and subscribe if you actually like this content and also join my Discord channel if you're working on network games. Catch you soon.